square quartz analog alarm clock. That's what it says on the box. But the big question is, where is the quartz and what's it doing? Only one way to find out. Time to dismantle or possibly destroy the clock. So, um, okay, it has a battery in already and it's going round. The minute hand is moving round. Let's see what we can do. Okay, and there's another box on the inside. Still working though, that's a good sign. Right, so how do I get into this box? And that is the inside of a quartz watch. And you're gonna to have to come closer. So come in, come in. The most important bit is this little metal tube here. Can you see that? And if I, if I take that out, it will, well, it will kill this and it will certainly invalidate my warranty, but uh, oh, oh, there it is, look at that. And this is the quartz crystal inside here. So I'm gonna try and get the quartz crystal out. And this is the tricky bit. That's it. Can you see that? It's tiny. I think it's time to switch to even higher magnification. So here is my tiny little quartz crystal. There you go. At one end, we've got two wires. And the other end, though, which is this bit here, which I'm pointing at now, this is a tiny sliver of quartz crystal. Remember, it's this is like, it's about a millimetre across and, ooh, I don't know, three millimetres long. And the idea is what you do is you, you push electricity into the two wires, into the quartz crystal, which causes it to change its shape ever so slightly. And then when the, you turn off the electricity, the quartz crystal relaxes and it emits a pulse of electricity of its own. Now, these quartz crystals are designed to pulse at exactly... 32,768 pulses per second. For those of you with a mathematical mind, you'll realize that that is two to the power of 15. So in other words, if you just keep dividing the pulses that are coming out of this quartz crystal by two, oops, I've lost it, come back. What you end up with is exactly one pulse per second. And it's super, super accurate. And all because of such a tiny little thing. And if you want the full story of wobbly quartz crystals, you're going to need to go to my new book, The Science of Everyday Life. It's really quite good.